Hey everyone, welcome back to the NPT Podcast. This is Will Crane, your host. Thanks so much for joining me as we talk through the content you need in order to dominate on test day. I'm joined today by the incomparable Mark Stevens. Uh, Mark, welcome. Happy to have you. Thank you. It's been way, way too long. Right, right. I've busted out many dozens of episodes solo. It's good to have you back on. Those of you who've listened back, I need to look back and see which precise episode you were last on. But you were a part of the podcast early. You've been busy, certainly teaching classes, working with uh, doing all your PT work. And now we're back at it with more questions. So I appreciate you taking the time to hang out with me as we talk through talk through the lymphatic system today. Absolutely. So as per our usual, we've got a practice question queued up. So we'll go through a practice question together. But just before we do that, quick reminder, be sure to check out ptfinalexam.com slash podcast where you can get all of our tips and cheat sheets and all the content you need to dominate on test data. Again, that's ptfinalexam.com slash podcast. So on the exam, on exam day, you can expect somewhere between three and eight questions related to the lymphatic system. Certainly not a very large system. Uh, honestly, by the time you've listened to this episode, which we're well past 100 on our episode count, you have listened to almost the number of, of lymphatic questions you'll encounter on test day. But this does encompass examination, differential diagnosis, and interventions. So without further ado, what we'll do is I'll read through the question. It will give you a moment to respond. We'll get Mark's thoughts on this. He'll tell you everything you need to know. And then we'll uh, yeah talk about it and conclude there. So here we go. Here's your question. While examining a patient with lymphedema, the therapist places the patient's right upper extremity into a water tank and measures the displacement. Which of the following exam tools best describes this technique? So one, bioelectrical impedance, two, girth measurement, three, stemmer sign, or four, volumetric measurement. So again, while examining a patient with lymphedema, the therapist places the patient's right upper extremity into a tank and measures the displacement. Which of the following examination tools best describes this technique? One, bioelectrical impedance, two, girth measurement, three, stemmer sign, and four, volumetric measurement. All right, so take us through this one, Mark. What do you, what do you see on this one? All right, so when we go in, uh, I feel like when we go into this one and have a look, it's just breaking it down um, again, just to try and go through, see the question like we would normally and find out, find the keywords. So um, lymphedema, um, so you know there's going to be some um, there's going to be some swelling there. You're going to be trying to see how big um, a uh, the limb is compared to the other one, um, and tr from there then trying to work out that. But as soon as you are um, looking at some of the keywords here, where it says right upper extremity into a water tank and measures displacement, that's all. All of a sudden, then you're starting to go, all right. Well, this is going to be more related to there's going to be some um, displacement for instance, with water. So going through, looking at the volumetric measurement um, is going to be the answer for that. So all, like these ones, girth measurements, um, stem signs, all of these are things that um, are, are related to lymphedema. But when you're looking at how much water escapes out of the, out of the, um, out of the, the bucket, the barrel, <laughs> however you want to put it, um, then, then that's where we're, where we're looking from there. So um, if you're, if you're, like watching this on YouTube, um, you can kind of see this this breakdown here. So I'll just give a a, a readout of the um, of the rationale. So like uh, volumetric measurement uses um, anatomical landmarks and water displacement to measure the size of the limb affected by lymphedema. Um, so when we the other options then so we had one bioimpedance 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 um, measurement is going to measure the flow of lymphatic material using uh, electrodes that uh, would get placed on various parts of your upper extremity. Uh, the second one then was girth measurement. Girth measurement is going to compare um, the circumference around the, around the limb that you're measuring. And then a stem assign, um, that's gonna require the therapist to attempt to kind of pinch the skin of the patient's um, dorsal toes, fingers, and you're trying to kind of see, um, you're doing a pinch there to see what you can, what you can get. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at there is it, the, as soon as it threw out water and tank measurements that think volume, think of those, of those things. And then it was, if it's looking at measurements, then you're going to go for the, for the other things. Um, have you, if I'm not mistaken, that's lymphedema? called, is it? Well, yeah. So I've, I've done some lymphedema. I've never used the water tank. If I'm not mistaken, they use what's called Archimedes principle, which 
you displace the equal value volume of water to the volume of the limb that was placed in there. So I've not ever done it with a water tank. I rely primarily on girth measurements. That That's obviously it can be difficult to find a tank large enough for some limbs, especially the lower extremity. So I've especially relied primarily on girth yeah, measurements. Exactly. Yeah, I, I have like, a few images a coming big, to mind. Big tub. Right. Yeah. So yep, this exactly. one would be this one would be coming from kind of coming from left field. This this answer um, because it's probably rare that you'd have encountered this out in clinical. Um, somebody doing um, somebody doing a volumetric measurement, um, but knowing what they are and knowing they're out there is part of the um, the way to break the answers down and break the questions down is knowing what what's available, how do I go for, and knowing the other ones, then you kind of a process of elimination. Right. And stemmer sign, stemmer sign is probably the, if you were to say the one, I can't call it a gold standard because you can have lymphedema and a negative stemmer sign, but a positive stemmer sign almost always indicates lymphedema, meaning that the skin is so full that you cannot pinch a fold of skin on the dorsum of the second toe or the second finger. So stemmer sign is obviously extremely useful for lymphedema and then girth measurements, volumetric measurements, and then bioelectrical impedance. That's where you send the electrical current through the skin. And as the skin becomes more tensile, it creates more flow, more, I should say, more resistance to flow. Anyway, so you would require a specialized tool for the bioelectrical impedance as well. So there you go. That's a good question about lymphatic examination. Again, there's only a handful of questions on that on exam day. But I'd encourage you to check out all the other episodes we have over on ptfinalexam.com slash podcast where you can sign up for all of our free stuff. Uh, plus, if you haven't yet, be sure to leave us a review over on Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, wherever it is you're listening to this podcast. You can also check out the video version of this podcast over on YouTube. Find us on all the social media channels. And in the meantime, stay safe. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks, Mark. Appreciate it. Talk to you all soon. Yep, you're welcome.